And now for something completely different. Here's what's coming up this hour on today's experience. It's fantastic, phenomenal, always fun, usually somewhat fascinating Friday as we head into the weekend. Not being afraid, even if the earth gives way or the mountains fall into the seas because our help comes from the Lord, Psalm 46. First, hooray for devotional diamonds of the day from Pastor Dave, <laughs> Dr. Dave. Hooray! I can't get my D's right today. Have you noticed my D's are all over the place? I've got like D, 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 Boy, I'm just... Yeah, I was about to say, you You said D, 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 Okay, so here it is. We have an opportunity to examine different devotional insights today. So our first topic is the Jesus Journal. That's right, the Jesus Journal. If you wish to use that name for a product, you just need to contribute 10% to this ministry. Okay, that's a joke. The Jesus Journal is a record of all the blessings Jesus has bestowed upon your life. It may not contain the past 50 years, but it could contain the next 50 years or even next the next five years or maybe the next five months, five weeks, or five days. It wouldn't matter. It would still serve as a reminder of God's faithfulness. That's number one. Number two, the following devotional diamond is entitled to the one we're going to do. is called It's Okay to Ask. So what does this mean? There are times when we face a situation, a circumstance, or a crossroad that definitely requires confirmation, direction, understanding, and success. There's nothing wrong and everything right with asking God to provide these. The mistake lies in trying to use these blessings and successes for selfish purposes. That's a bozo no-no. And finally, the last devotional diamond will focus on the importance of our words. Perhaps you use lip balm to prevent your lips from drying out. There's another way to ensure your words remain fresh. Make sure the words you speak honor the Lord. When you offer praise to God, he considers it a form of gratitude payment. Did you hear that? I want you to hear this. When you offer praise to God, he considers it a form of gratitude payment. Well, it will never be enough to repay him for everything, but it is certainly the right gesture to present for his honor. David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing. Politics, boo. Entertainment and current events. Personal revelations. Spiritual observations. My life's insanities. And why they? So much more. Remember, it's not professional radio. How much? So much not professional radio that not only have I messed up both intros, but we have somebody on the line that we're going to send through before I finish off on the intro. That's how unprofessional we are. So in the meantime, somebody's on the line. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hey, David. Good afternoon, Sergio. Hello, Sergio. How are you, my good brother? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm really doing great. I've been... Working out uh, at this new gym, I really like the gym, and so it's kind of like nice because my older gym, it wasn't as clean. <laughs> is that a nice way to say that? <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 right. So this gym is like really clean, so it's like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> nice, nice. So, there you go. That's how awesome. how are you? How are you doing? And what can I do to be a blessing for you today? Well, I just have um, one comment, and I need clarification on something that I read this week. Sure. Um, so I think I told you I'm in Leviticus now. Yep. Uh, obviously, I can't remember the, the chapter or the, the verse, but I'm just going to go off memory. So that let me, let me start off in, regarding the comment. So as well you know, 
um, you know, what is it, uh, Genesis, um, Exodus, and now I'm in Leviticus, right? Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. So I think I mentioned to you in Exodus and now in, Le- in Leviticus, I'm, this is my comment to you. I see like a like a consistent um, like a consistent um, saying or or presence of fire. Um, I don't know if you've gotten that or not with how many times you've read um, those chap you know those books, uh-huh. but I, I see there's a lot of like fire and like um, just something about fire. It seems to be like a, a common denominator in that in in, in those. In, you know, in those scriptures. That's my first comment. I want to get your opinion on that later. But here's my clarification. So when Moses and Aaron uh, are in the presence of the Lord in Leviticus, and then uh, Aaron's son, yes, um, they do they do something to God or something, and then he kills them. Correct. Right. Yes. Um, so and, and it's just and you know how the Bible's kind of like really really like think. I mean, it's really short. And I say, and then you read, I'm like, hey, where's the Where's the uh, explanation to that, right? So, <laughs> right. What happens, right? <laughs> be, because, because because it's only the Bible's like one or two sentences, and if you don't get it, it's like you got to ask, right? So right. I'm asking now. So what did they do to deserve death? Uh, that's my question to you. And then I guess you can expand on your opinion on what you think. I think of the common denominator of fire okay. in, in, excellent. In, those, uh, in those passages. But Both anyway, of those are excellent. Thank you as always, David. I'll let you go. Um, I'll, I'll listen off air, but thank you for always being a part of my journey. Um, have a great weekend, and um, I love what you do. And ha- have a good one. Thank Bye. you, brother. God bless you. All right, I'm going to answer that question. We're going to just take that on and just go with it for a while because it's such a great question. See, I'm telling you, we're going to have to go through – years and just pull out Sergio's. The book should be called Sergio's Questions. <laughs> just have a day where yeah. every fill is Sergio's yeah, Questions. Yeah, just like, it would be so good. It would, well, it would probably take two shows. Right. And right. That's amazing. All right. First of all, what, what are we talking about? Let's go with the first thing, the second thing first. We'll kind of reverse the order. So he's talking about Aaron's son. So that's Nadab and, Ab- and Abihu. This is in Leviticus chapter 10 for those who are trying to figure out what's going on or what are you talking about. So what they did was they took, and I'll just read it to you so you can you can know what's going on. Chapter 10, Leviticus 1. Then Nadab and Abihu, uh, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put put incense in it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. So the two sons offered before the Lord what we would call, what's often called a strange fire. Now, let me say something on a contemporary level. A very popular teacher did an entire series called Strange Fire, and he was trying to connect that to the charismatic church. That was very immature. I don't, it doesn't matter if he's more seasoned than me. That's nothing. Elihu made it very clear to Job that Job was being immature. And so in that case, making that connection is very immature. What happened with Nadab and Abihu was simply they took their own concoction and brought it before the Lord and said, this will, this will suffice. Here's our offering. Now, if you'll remember in the beginning of Genesis how Cain and Abel uh, both brought an offering, one was accepted and one was not, this was much worse. This was an insulting offering being right before the very presence of of God. I mean, you're in the very presence of God, and you give him, so if the Lord says, I need you to give me 24 karat gold, and you give him 24 carats that you chew on, that would be the equivalent of what these guys did. And it was so dishonorable that the Lord smote them. 
So what's the lesson there? Well, the first lesson there is when you bring an offering to the Lord, it better be real and it better be genuine. It better be first fruits. It better not be left over and it better not be stuff made up by you in the sense of ah, this will work. I don't care kind of attitude. That's the wrong attitude when you bring a sacrifice before the Lord, when you bring an offering to the Lord. And remember that Aaron being the high priest and then Nadab and Abihu being his sons and being the following priests, so priest number two and priest number three, are operating continually in the presence of the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, you do what the Lord tells you. You don't do what you want to do. And this is the whole element for Christians is like, yo, I love being a Christian as long as it doesn't interfere with my way of life. It's like that ain't going to work. That is unacceptable. And from an eternal point of view, that will bring fire. Just so you can know. So what they did was they offered what the Lord had required, specific offerings, and they offered something else communicating that this will suffice for you, God. And that right there is when the people doing the offering diminish God. Now, you can do a lot of things that the Lord will forgive you for, but if you're in the presence of God and operating in the presence of God on the behalf of people and you're a jerk about it, you're going to pay a price. If you're not – if you're, let's just look at the New Testament. If you're even dishonest about it, like Ananias and Sapphira, it could cost you your life. It's like, what are you talking about, Dave? That would never happen. Really? Maybe you should read 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 – where it talks about those that offered, got involved in communion and did it in such a way that Paul says specifically, New Testament, because of the way you guys did communion, some of you are sickly and some of you are infirmed and some of you have been judged. New Testament, you can't change that. People are like, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Stop trying to diminish God. That's ridiculous. What we do is yield to his glory, his honor, and say, yes, Lord. That's what we do. So if there's anybody out there that's thinking, well, you know, it's Christian. I can just kind of like, oh, yeah, whatever. I have a great relationship with the Lord. When the Lord rebukes me, that's not the time for me to be a, a, a wise guy. Get it? That's just what I'm, I'm just laying it out before you. That's the truth. And it's not that God won't have compassion on you, but you don't push the buttons the wrong way. I mean, it's just absurd. Why would you insult God? In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 2, let me just uh, let me just say this. In Jeremiah chapter 2, the Lord uses Jeremiah. It's his first prophecy, uh, the first major prophecy, and his prophecy is all about, you know, he was good to Israel. He brought Israel out of the desert. He brought them, uh, he brought them out of Egypt. He brought them through their desert. He brought them into the promised land. And then he says, what did I do to you that you've treated me in such a way that you've turned away from me and insulted me so much? And it's like, he, 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 it's like you, 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 you changed me for other gods. And he even says, what other nation on the planet has ever done that? And it's like we start off in the Lord, and it's like we have respect and love and appreciation. We have a comfort and peace. But you don't treat God like he's some secondary element. And you don't give him what you want to give him if he asks you for something specifically. If, you, if he asks you to give him, then you give to him in whatever capacity, time, treasure, talent, whatever. And so they bore the brunt because they were in the very presence. They were, it was a little more elevated, and it's true that people that have a higher level can, can tend to have a higher judgment. That's why it's, the Bible says in James, not, be not many teachers, for they will receive a greater judgment. That's true. But you don't offer to the Lord something that's half-hearted like that, or you just put in there whatever you want, or you give them some of something, because that's insulting. All right, That's number one. So I hope, Sergio, that helps you with that. Number two, fire. Wow. This is so massive. I won't be able to do it in this show. But here's the thing about fire. Fire is good and bad. Okay? What do you mean good and bad? Well, okay, the two sons, right? Fire went out from the Lord and devoured them. We would say not good, right? That's all. Fire indicates judgment. But fire also indicates power. Fire indicates the presence of God. Fire is what led the children of Israel by night, cloud by day, fire by night, pillar of fire by night. 
there is different elements in all of the different things that are used. It depends on the circumstance. Fire can be the power of the Holy Spirit. Fire can be judgment from God. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about the sinners falling into the hands of an angry God, having to do with fire and purging. It's like very important for us to understand. It has different applications most of the time. Whether it's judgment or empowerment, most of the time, fire has to do with the Holy Spirit. Not all the time, most of the time. And it's positive and it's negative, depending on the context. But fire represents God in many ways. Think of it in this way. Fire is absolutely essential when it's cold. But fire will also burn you if you get too close. Get that? That's why we needed the righteousness of Jesus Christ to get close to God. Because apart from that, we'd get burned. Fire can be very powerful because it can light the way. Fire can be very damaging because it can burn the ends of the camp inward. So it's both of those. It's not like, oh, it's only good or it's only bad. That's ridiculous. It's all of that. But it is so powerful. It is a great picture of God. In fact, there is a passage that says God is a consuming fire. In that context, you recognize his holiness, but also fire, the tongues of fire that fell on the apostles to declare in different languages. That fire was also very powerful and changed the world. God uses that to communicate who he is, and it should bring a serious reverence and respect in all of us. Can you say amen? I know you can. I know you can. All right, we'll take our break. We'll come back. We'll kind of reset. Excellent question, Sergio. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, we'll take a short break, then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the true station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Since the dawn of the Internet, people have been looking for a website they can be proud of without costing an arm or a leg. People want a quality website to promote their ministry, business, hobby, or passion. Introducing Cowpunch Sites. Cowpunch Sites can help you create and maintain a quality website. From design to security, Cowpunch does it all. Cowpunch is a family-owned and operated business, taking a fresh approach to business. Lots of clients at lower prices. Make mom happy. The most significant benefit of working with Cowpunch Sites is that you work with real people, not cheesy templates. No outsourcing. It's $57 a month, and there's no setup fee and no cancellation fees. When you go to cowpunchsites.com slash dad. That's cowpunchsites.com slash dad. That's me. Oh, did I mention that it's $57 a month? Cowpunch Sites, $57 a month, and that's no bull. Um, Dave, this is a nice radio station. Oops, sorry. That's Cowpunch Sites, $57 a month, and that's no bull There, that's better. Cowpunchsites.com slash dad. What is the David Spoon experience? Now, I want to pull this out of Jude. Uh, Jude only has one chapter. Jude is the letter before the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation, singular. Uh, it's the last letter before the book of Revelation. And uh, this is what it says in verses 17 through 19. I want you to listen to this, and then I want you to think about today all the stuff that's going on. I'm not going to go overly political. I want you just to th consider the landscaping that we're all living in right now, the landscape that we're, of society. It says this, but you must remember, beloved, that the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, they said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to that. This is a prophecy that is being brought up by Jude, who is a brother to Jesus, won't even identify him th himself that way, brother to James, who was in charge of the church after the James of Peter, James, John, 
died in Acts 12 and Acts 15, the other James kind of ascends to the position of power, so to speak. Uh, and he's not in charge of everybody. He's just kind of leading the show, and uh, like Peter did in the early church. And this is Jude, his brother, and the brother of Jesus. And he's telling you, you got to remember what the apostle said. The apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he's, so, he's so humble when he writes that. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. We are going to do our trivia question. We are going to review how you can get in touch with us because we want to make sure you understand how to get in touch with us. Of course, you're always welcome to email us, david at hemustincrease.org. We do get those emails live. Ask Eddie. He knows. Uh, also, you can uh, text us, by the way. I didn't say Texas. I said text us. Get that difference there? All right, that's 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483 as well. You can call us at the 972-445-0770 number. That's 972-445-0770. We're going to skip our normal Jacob thing, if that's okay, because uh, we're just all over the place. Uh, bottom line is, if you've got a prayer request or if you've got a praise report or if you've got something you want to share or something is on your heart or you got a question, Sergio asked a brilliant question. He always asks great questions, and uh, it's amazing. And so if you've got that going on, you are more than welcome to respond that way. Additionally, we will uh, allow, of course, jokes <clears throat> They're all, your only requirement is they all have to be funnier than mine, <laughs> which, let me tell you, is really easy, okay? That's a pretty low bar to set. Uh, additionally, of course, we do trivia, and so I want to make sure that we do our trivia and keep that going, and I love trivia. Trivia, is, to me, is just, it's fun, and it can be even more fun. Now, listen to how I'm going to do this, okay? <laughs> I'm going I'm to ask you a trivia question. I'm not going to give you a scriptural reference. I'm going to give you a song, so get ready, okay? All right, here's your trivia question. What was the name of the sea when Jesus harnessed the raging storm? What was the name of the sea? And here is your hint. Ready? Okay. Put your hand in the hand of the man that stilled the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself, and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from... you got to fill in that blank. <laughs> you guys didn't think I could pull it off. You were wrong. <laughs> that's just so funny. I'm going to clip that. Okay. Anyhow, uh, bottom line, that's the question. What was the name? Of the sea where Christ harnessed the raging storm. If you are not sure, please use the song. Put your hand in the hand of the man. You get it. All right. All right. Now, you got that rolling on, and I want to make sure that you know. If you want to, you can call us 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483 or send an email, david at hemusincrease.org. In the meantime, we're going to do our DNA. Uh, we do have somebody calling in. Uh, i got to see if they can hold. If they can't hold, we'll take them and then do DNA. If they can hold... We'll have them hold, and we'll do DNA, because I already said DNA, and I like doing DNA. It's important to me to make it important to you. How about, is that a good way to say that? I think it's not a bad way. All right. And uh, again, like, like I said, you can always ask questions, do weird things. All right. Uh, do they, do, should we take the call first? Yes, we should. Okay. Let's have the person uh, come through. We'll take the call, have them answer the trivia question, go from there, and then after that, we'll do the DNA. Okay. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hi, this is Betty. Hi, Betty. How are you? I'm good. I think I know the answer, maybe. <laughs> okay. Now, I like that you said that, okay? But I want to make sure, because you, know, you don't want me singing it again. Did you hear the song I gave as kind of a hint? 
I did. Okay, that might help you. I think that'll really help you. And if not, don't worry about it, babe. We'll get you there one way or another. So that's the great thing about the show. So here it is. I'll ask the question, and then we'll give you the chance to answer. Straightforward, what was the name of the sea where Jesus Christ harnessed the raging storm? I think it was the Sea of Galilee. That is correct, Amundo! You are right! Excellent job! Excellent, excellent job. That's why I did that. So the, ver- the the real scriptural reference is you have to read before and after the actual story to see that it was from Galilee. And so it's tougher for people to make that connection. That's why I gave the song. <laughs> okay, the song helps. It did. It, otherwise, it would have been a guess, but I pretty much knew when you would sung the song that it was the Sea of Galilee. There you go. That's how I remembered it. <laughs> Just so you can know, like, oh, yeah, that's how I remember that. Uh, Roger again told me not to quit my day job for my singing, so I guess I'll just keep doing the hosting thing. I okay. know. Oh, you got to keep singing. I think you do a great job with your singing. Oh, that's so kind of you. I'll send you money later. Okay. Anyway. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bless you, too. All right. Phenomenal job by Betty, right? We were just having the show of shows. Are we not having fun today? We were having fun today. But serious teaching, but still fun. You see, you can do both. No, you can't. Yes, you can. When Jesus called James and John sons of thunder, I know you're thinking that's super serious, but I, 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 I'm not sure that's correct. I think it was like, okay, sons of thunder. Anyway, we'll just uh, deal with that later. DNA, we got to do our DNA. Very important to do. And then what we'll have to do is Jake's taking the following segments of what we're going to have to do. But DNA, uh, D stands for draw closer to the Lord. Daily. Daily. And and you hear me say this all the time, and I'm going to keep saying it's not going to change. It doesn't, it's, it's not. Okay, I got to do it at this time, or I got to do it this way. I gotta, I, I'm not saying any of that. If that works for you, do that. It works for me. I do everything I do in my day after I do my devotions. Okay, I, I get up and you know have a cup of coffee and tell my wife I love her and da 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 da. And then when things get serious and my brain starts actually working, then it's all about you know doing my my Bible time and my prayer time. And then that's it. Okay, other people do that at night. Totally fine. Other people do it in the middle of the day. Other people do it when they can squeeze it in. Got it. Just make sure you get it in, and don't tell me you don't have the time, even if it means 15 minutes less sleep or 20 minutes less sleep. Too bad. Better you should have 20 minutes less sleep every day and have a quality walk with God. That's just because then your sleep will be sweeter anyway. You see what I'm saying? So that's D, draw closer to the Lord daily. N, never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. In Luke 9, 26, he said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you when I come in glory with my Father. Don't do that. Yes, I know what the world says. They don't have a heaven to put you in. They don't love you. They didn't die for you. Get that? All right. Never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. And then A, always be ready. To serve. Now, what do you think that means to be ready to serve? Let's 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 break that down. Be okay, present tense. Ready. Okay, I'm ready. To going to be doing something. Serve. There it is. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve. And so we follow his example, right? We live our lives trying to reflect Jesus Christ. Even if it's glory by glory, as the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18, which is step by step, we we are still here as we are continually growing and reflecting Jesus Christ more and more. D, draw closer to the Lord daily. N, never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. A, always be ready to serve. We will take our break and then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, that true station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Like any person searching for answers, I too have wondered about him. He has a weird sense of humor. If people are seeking wisdom and insight from the great teachers around the world, would they go to David? No, I don't think so. Those big ears really don't help. Will people enjoy his perspective on culture, politics, food, sports, and local and national news? I don't know. He's just a client. 
Tune in to the David Spoon Experience on KAAM. The David Spoon Experience. Let me read this thing from Pastor Ray, and then we'll do the trivia question, and then we'll see what happens because I have no idea. This is from Pastor Ray, uh, who passed away, by the way, on January 4th this year, 2022. He's my good friend, and I can't wait to see him up in heaven. This one's titled Joy, Expectation, and Delight. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. This is Pastor Ray's devotional. I often see people go through a spiritual drought. More than once, I have found myself in this dry, dark place where God seems far away and we feel even farther. It's like being the children of Israel, once again wandering in the wilderness trying to find our way. That's when I cling to the belief that we are being strengthened and matured through it all. How we survive the wilderness experience of our lives depends on our attitude towards God's word. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible, and I get such a kick out of reading it because King David got so excited writing about it of all the things he gets excited about writing about the laws of God. He sang about them. He put statutes of the law to music. He positively exulted in them. In Psalm 119, verse 14, he compared God's testimonies to the riches. In verse 15, he declared, I will meditate on your precepts. In verse 24, he says, your testimonies are my delight and my counselors. David was on to something. He loved God's word, and he knew that the secret to enjoying life, even in the wilderness, was to turn to God's word with joy, expectation, and delight. As children, we struggle to mature under our parents' authority. When we're spiritually born again into the family of God, we become children again, reparented. Oh, what a great line that is. Reparented by our Heavenly Father as we grow toward maturity and learning to trust Him. Allow His Word to light your way, and the wilderness will not seem so daunting. Let His Word guide your feet, and you will never get lost. Sometimes all Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Here's your next trivia question. On the seventh day, now hold on, let me finish. On the seventh day, how many times did it take for Joshua's army to march around Jericho before the walls fell? On the seventh day, how many times did they march around? Your answer, Joshua chapter 6, verse 5. Joshua chapter 6, verse 5. How many times did they march around on day 7 around Jericho for the walls to fall? fall that's the question if you think you know the answer 972-445-0770 that's 972-445-0770 you can also text in 214-210-8483 that's 214-210-8483 or you can send an email david at he must increase Dot org. So now I'm going to send you to the website. And here's the deal on the website. So there are brochures you can get, plus the book, which we'll give you for free. The brochures are free, no requirements, just if you want to pass them out. That's We just call those people the ambassadors for the show. Okay. We also have bumper stickers and, and uh, business cards. Okay. It's pretty, pretty simple. Additionally, there's a place to put your praise report or your prayer request if you want to st- communicate that, but you don't want to do it on the air. We get it. Not a problem, okay? If you if you need some help in that, we'll be glad to help. If you have a prayer request that's private, you can communicate that. Nobody will hear, know about it, know what's going on. It's kept private. There's nothing else that takes place. Additionally, there's just a lot of stuff. <laughs> Let me say this. Can I say that? Is it, 
There is a lot of stuff on that website, more than you would even imagine. In fact, there's even a, a chapter of one of the books is on the website. There's just a lot of stuff. And there's a place to give, and we want you to use that if the Lord puts it on your heart. That's keeping it that simple, not even complex. Check it all out on the website, which is kind of how we kind of keep things going, at hemustincrease.org. Prayer request? Hemustincrease.org. Praise report? Hemustincrease.org. Looking to give to this ministry? Hemustincrease.org. Confused by what's happening right now? Hemustincrease.org. Hemustincrease.org. From the valley of the jolly. Ho, ho, ho. Green giant. I love that. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. All right, we do have some. We do have somebody ready to answer the trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? David? Yes. It's Jay. How are you? I'm doing good, Jay. How are you doing today? Oh, it's kind of a tough day, but I just but am always uplifted just by your, I don't know, what's the word, exuberance? Yeah, enthusiasm, exuberance, or insanity. Any of those will work. <laughs> Any of those will work. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do the trivia question, and we're going to pray over you, okay, and ask the Lord to bless. Is that cool? Yeah. All right, let's do the, tri- good. Let's do the trivia question. On the seventh day, how many times did it take for Joshua's army to march around Jericho before the walls actually fell? Fell, according to Joshua 6 5. How many times did they march well, around it on the seventh day? I didn't look it up, so I think I may show my ignorance here, but was it 70 times? Say it again. Was it 70 times? Do the first part of that, not the second part of that. The first part. I, I, I said, I, I, said uh, I didn't look it up, so I'm going to show my ignorance. I got gotcha. um, was it, you. Was it, did he have to march around it 70 times? Seven, it, was, it was 70. You're just, you're just really committed to it, but it's Seven times. Oh, you the first part of that. I yeah, it. that's what really I meant by the first help. part of it. That's right. I that's thought it. seven, and then I thought, no, it was more than that. They, no. they marched for days and days and well, days. They, yeah, they and did. So, what they did is they marched but, for six days. They marched one time each day for six days. And then on the seventh yeah. day, they marched seven times. So actually, they marched a total of 13 times. That would be the number. That, that's I know. It's kind of like, wow, where'd they get that from? It doesn't matter. That's what yeah. the Lord wanted to do. So That's what God wanted them to do. That's what they did. Right. That's that's the way to do it. If the Lord says do it this way, just do it that way. You know, it's just so doesn't much. doesn't matter if I pray and I hear from the Lord and he says, stand on, the, stand on your head and stack babies between your toes. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do, right? If that's what the Lord did, we used to laugh when we were younger in the Lord because because this is kind of a Jewish thing. We'd say, if the Lord asks you to sit in the corner and spit nickels, start spitting. I mean, it's just like that's the way it goes. You do what yeah, the I'll Lord tell you tells what, you If to you do. could spit nickels, I'd be there to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me pray over you, brother, for circumstance and for health and everything else. Is that cool? Thank you, sir. Let's do it. Let's do it. Father, we come before you right now. I thank you for my brother, Jay. Lord, we love Jay, and we ask you to bless and encourage him. We know he's going through a tough time. It's not easy, and he's got a lot of things that seem like it's against him. But, Lord, that doesn't matter in the scope of your power because whatever is against him doesn't stand because you are still for him. And, Lord, instead of him walking in any kind of doubt as to whether you're for him, remind him that you are a better savior than he is a sinner and that he will never be a better sinner than you are a savior and that you love him and that you protect him. And even if it's not going the way he he sees it and gets it and doesn't understand, that's exactly what Job went through. And Job was upright in all ways, but he didn't catch it. So give him the ability to see, bless his eyes, open his eyes. And while he's going through all of the struggle and all of the tough, let him keep his eyes focused on you so that he doesn't sink in the water. That is the only thing, Lord, that's going to keep him sustained is a fixed vision on you. Help his eyes to look up 
and to see you in everything, even if it doesn't look pretty, to know that you're the author and you've got it. And we ask you to just give him that sense of peace, even now, that he would know, nope, the Lord does love me. Let him receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, David, and thank you. And I just want to say I praise my Lord for his eternal nature. He was, is, and will always be. And even if I go through this pain the rest of the days here on this earth, it will be but like a vapor. And I have uh, to look forward to an eternal life in the presence, the holy presence of the Lord with no pain, no tears, and all jubilation uh, uh, toward him. Amen. And so hang I, it, hang on I can that. live this. So yeah. you can. And, and by the way, that guy, it's Samson. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that day that I called and I said, you know yeah, that guy yeah, that tells yeah, the yeah, jokes yeah, all the time. You know. <laughs> and he got on. He got on after me and he goes, "I'm that guy." And I'm like, "Oh, Samson, I didn't mean to do that to you." We're so funny. We're just a weird group of people. <laughs> You know, I love you, I love Jacob, and I love what you're doing across this nation. And so many people are turning to the Lord because of you, and I'm I'm so thankful for you. Uh, everything to the Lord. Everything, right? Exactly. Exactly, Amen. brother. Amen. All right, God bless you, bro. You too, sir. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Uh, just, you know, don't you just love shows like this? I do. I just love them because they're fun and they're real human-y. Human y. That's <laughs> yet another word. I should come up with a lexicon. Human y, where it's a lot of people y stuff. <laughs> what, what'd you say? Was it yesterday? You said text a Rooney? Yeah. Text a Rooney. Yeah, yes. text a Rooney. I, like, then... I just got to have my own little. I think that's what we need. All right, let's, we are going to do Jake's take because we hadn't had a chance to do that. And it is important because uh, uh, there's a lot leaning on a lot of things and a lot of interesting news. So let's just do Jake's take right now. <laughs> Hi, right, my friend. What do you got uh, in regards to old news and current news? What do you have? So the Dallas Mavericks won the Western Conference Championship last night. Ooh, congratulations! There we go. To Get the a little Mavs. Going. We we salute all the players. We went commenting on upper management. Right. We're just going. We're just saying we salute the players. Okay, great job, great job. Yes. And so, they are in the finals. Then, yes, right? so this is the it. third time they've made the finals. Uh, the last time was 2011 when they won championship. So, so it's been 13 years wow. since so they've made the finals. One for two in the finals, then, right? Yeah, uh, one for one. Yep. Well, the, the, were they in yep. there? They're, they're, yes, they, before that they made it in 2006 and lost, okay, and, so and then they two. made it back in 2011 and won. Okay, so got it. Got this it. is the third time they've made right, it, and let's see it. Yeah. they will be playing the Boston Celtics. Uh, game one is next Thursday. Wow, so that, that should be a fun game. The first two games will be in Boston, so now, it e- should be a great series. Even if you're not a huge Dallas fan, right? Mm-hmm. You're probably not a Boston fan. Anyway, right. just, the only, the only people that are joke. Boston fans are Boston fans. That's right. That's yeah, a right. joke. I'm from Detroit where the Pistons played them. All right, never mind. <laughs> All right, so, and then what's the other news? And then the uh, Dallas Stars play a big game tonight against the Edmonton Oilers. Series is tied 2-2, two to two, so big, big game. Whoever wins this game, there's a good chance they win the series. Right, so they're gonna. So and then the Panthers, Florida Panthers, right. did win. Right, Florida so, Panthers did win. They beat the Rangers to go up three to two in that series. Wow! So, wow! It's all right there, folks. It's we right we will there. have a different champion. Whether it's the star, I hope it's the Stars. You right. know, because you know they're they're Dallas, but um, the Stars have only won one championship in the '90s, and the Florida Florida Panthers they made it before, but they've never won it. So we're wow. gonna get a different champion as far as uh, NHL. So wow! And then the Mavericks they've only won one championship and. Celtics, they've won like I want to say seventeen. Like they, they've won a lot. So <laughs> yeah, they, they've won a lot. Enough. Let's let the Mavericks win. Yeah, let's let the Mavericks. I, I agree with that. Excellent job, by the way. Thank you. Excellent, excellent job. So all right, there you go. So we did the uh, uh, Jake's take. We've covered everything. Now you're sitting there thinking, well, you need to get to the teaching. Slow down. Okay, let me let me say something. Okay, it's really important. In this show, since we've started, so we've been in this second hour, forty three minutes and forty seconds. Okay, and it's right in front of me. I can't, it's not like you can miss it. Here, it's on my computer, by the way. See, I told you it works. Here's the bottom line. You've heard from different people. You've heard from Jay, and you've heard from Betty. I mean, you've heard different people. And then you've heard Sergio ask a question. 
Those are three people that should be in your prayer list. Why? Because God brought them into your universe. That's why. Because Sergio started off the show, right, with a question. Then we went into and Betty had a, a, a trivia answer. And Jay had a trivia answer. Then we prayed for Jay. All those people should be a part of your prayer life. Do you have to remember every single person by name? No. Do you need to pray for your brothers and sisters? Yes. That's what the Lord wants. And when we come back, when I do this teaching, I'm going to really illustrate what the, the level of importance I think that, that most people do. Maybe we don't catch it as much as we should, but it's a really cool little teaching. You just got to hang out with us. We'll take a short break and then come back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? This is Brother Don. Hi, Brother Don. How are you? Well, fine. I haven't been. I haven't been. Out, I've been out of town. Well, I'm glad to have you back in town. I'm sorry the weather's so hot. Uh, <laughs> why? It's, it's, it's been a little hot lately. Yeah, it's been. <laughs> it's too hot for me. Yeah, it's a little hot. My when my dog looks outside, like, hey, you want to fetch the ball? And the dog looks at you and says, No, I'm not going outside. You go play. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and then you can't even go out even in the late evening because at ten o'clock it was still 101. Yeah, here. It's, it's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. And it, when I grew up and spent a lot of time in Phoenix, and that's not how it was in. Phoenix. In Phoenix, it was much hotter at the 1, 2, and 3 o'clock, and then you would get that more desert cool at the 7, 8, you know, cl- here it's a lot different. So you, know, you learn, you learn, and you adapt, right? I mean, you yes. f- figure it out. All, all right, my brother, here we go. Who complimented Solomon? How happy your men must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. It was Queen Candace. What was Queen Queen of Sheba? Yes, that would be it! Queen of Sheba! <laughs> yeah, that was the queen. I think I've, also, I've also heard of Queen Candace, though, too. Candace is the queen that's in Acts, the book of Acts, when she's with the other king and Paul is talking to her. And the reason that I know that is I had a business partner whose daughter was named Candace. <laughs> That's how I knew it. <laughs> but yeah, Queen of Sheba, she was all like, man, she's the one that brought all the spices and was like, yeah, this is happening. They love you. That's what she yeah, said. I thought song. it was kind of cool. You know, we did a study on here not too long ago. And, you know, you know how you go into a restaurant and everybody wears uh, uniforms? Uh-huh. That's the way, that was the way it was with. King Solomon, too. They did the same thing. Yeah, they they had their stuff together. It. That guy had plumbing. People think, oh, they, these people invented plumbing. That's wrong. Solomon had plumbing going. People don't even know that. It's like that guy was structural aqueduct um, uh, connoisseur. He knew exactly what to do. Well, um, the amazing. Lord gave him that, uh, gave him that privilege. Yeah. <laughs> Great job, right. my brother. The David Spoon Experience. Oh, welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, where I have to make a correction on my own fill. How about that? Candace was the queen of the Ethiopian in Acts chapter 8. It was Bernice that was with Agrippa. I blew that one. That's just one of those things people are probably like, what? What are you talking about? So in the Acts 25, 26, that's Bernice and Agrippa and Festus. And then uh, Candace is the queen of the Ethiopian in Acts 8. My, I actually gave him the wrong reference point. See, I make many, many goofy things. <laughs> Do you like that? I make many, many goofy things. Thank you very much. All right. All right, here's your last trivia question. You guys got to get ready. Here we go. You guys should get this one. What instrument did David play to soothe Saul? When Saul was kind of losing it, what instrument did David play? Wow. If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. 
You can also text in 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david at he must increase dot org. There are two potential answers. I would refer you to the Marx Brothers movies to try and pick the better of them if you could, but I'm not requiring that. Uh, remember, I'm not going to tell you what his name was, but one of the Marx Brothers played an instrument. Hello. Uh, okay, 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483 or send an email, David, at he must increase.org. Org, okay, but I am going to go tell you there's two generally accepted answers, and it's okay either way. Okay, I'm just going to say that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to can we do a quick history and then uh, have the person on, or do we need to do we need to jump on the person? I mean, does he need to respond right away? What do we do? Uh, I guess we can do the call real quick. Okay, well let's do the caller. Okay, now let's do the caller. Let's bring the caller on through. Knock, knock, this is David. Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Bobby again. How I, are you doing? I'm doing great, Bobby. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Just sitting out here watching the animals. But uh, I think I know the answer to that. It's uh, either a harp or a liar. That is correct, Armando! <laughs> Bobby, it's a double. You get a double star in that one because that is both it. It's either the harp or the liar. It's either one. It's like people are like, well, it's got to be this, got to be this. I do think it's funny that Lewis said the accordion. Uh, I just, 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 I'm waiting for somebody to come in. I'm waiting for Al to come in and go the gazoo. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> excellent job, my brother. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Really right on time. Well, I, I enjoy listening to your show. Uh, uh, you have a good weekend there. God bless you. All right. God bless you, my brother. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. All right, we're going to do history real quick. Let's do history. Let's go let's back in the past. Let's go let's back in the past. All right, real quickly, today is National Macaroon Day. It is also, I know, it's macaroons. And then National Smile Day. <laughs> see, Wait, see me smiling? Oh, wait, you don't. It's radio. Okay. We're smiling. You just can't see it. <laughs> uh, it's World Parrot Day. So the only thing I'm going to do on World Parrot Day is combine this history with the joke. Okay? Ready? Okay. Got All right. It. This is it. Ready? Right? Then, then I'm going to the teaching. All right. There was a lady, and she uh, had a parrot. and uh, and then But then she had a problem, so she called the plumber. All right? <gasps> then she got an emergency phone call, and she had to leave. And then the problem is the bird only knows how to say who is it. The bird doesn't know how to say anything else, but who is it? And so the lady leaves, and then the plumber comes, and the lady forgets all about it because she's got an emergency, and then the plumber knocks on the door. And the bird goes, who is it? And the guy goes, it's the plumber. And he knocks on the door again. The bird goes, who is it? The guy goes, it's the plumber. The guy knocks on the door again. The bird goes, who is it? It's the plumber. It's the plumber. You call me. I'm the plumber right here. Knocks on the door again. The bird goes, who is it? He goes, it's a plumber. It's a plumber. It's a plumber. And then the guy falls over, keels over. The lady comes home, and so he looks at the guy, opens it, looks at the bird, and says, oh, my gosh, what happened? The bird goes, it's the plumber. <laughs> Come on. That's a great joke. It's the plumber. <laughs> All right, let's go into the teaching. <laughs> That's all of history. We're not doing anything else. The only other thing to tell you, let's see, uh, Hilton Hotel. First Hilton Hotel was purchased in, in Cisco, Texas by Conrad Hilton. Did you know that? The first Hilton Hotel ever. Okay, there you go. All right, listen to this. This is such a cool teaching. I just want you to catch this, okay? Exodus 18, 8 through 9. Just listen. It's so good. If, you, if you'll pick up on it, you'll get what Jesus is saying about, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbors, love yourself. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Well, that just takes it up a notch, doesn't it? Exodus 18, 8 through 9. Moses told Jethro, his father-in-law, everything that the Lord had done to the king and the people of Egypt in order to rescue the Israelites. He also told them about the hardships the people had faced on the way and how the Lord had saved them. When Jethro heard all this, he was happy. Just listen to that. 
This is a huge teaching. Moses told Jethro everything the Lord had done to the king and the people of Egypt in order to rescue the Israelites. He also told about all the hardships the people had faced on the way and how the Lord had saved them. When Jethro heard about it, he was happy. First of all, Moses told them everything. Everything the Lord had done. The Lord had rescued the people. The Lord had gotten them through hardships. He had saved the people. And here's the key to the entire teaching. Jethro was happy. The key is he was happy that God was working for other people. So you hear me say this all the time about sharing praises and then, you know, everybody connecting and being supportive and we weep together, we, we rejoice together. Let me tell you what's so important about the church that's supposed to be one of the testimonies of the church. And don't talk to me about denominations being the problem. It's people in the denominations that are being a problem. And the reality is we should be happy for others that God is working in their lives. Because every time God is working in somebody's life, it's a testimony to you and me that God is presently working. And that should be the biggest encouragement. And we should be happy for them because the Lord is doing great things for the people around us. That's what it's talking about when it says, let not the interest be only about yourself, but also have the interests of others. That's what it means to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You make it as practical as you can be. Yeah, be happy that the God that, that the God of the universe is doing awesome things in people's lives around you because that's the attitude that we're supposed to have about our brothers and sisters. How do you love your neighbors? You love yourself. You can't even be happy for your neighbor when God is doing something for them. That Jethro was happy. Listen, he was happy. He wasn't even a part of it. He wasn't there. I mean, he's connected because of his, his daughter and because of Mo. But the idea is he's not even there. He's just happy for them. You know, when people call up and share praise to us, I am genuinely happy for them. I just think it's great. And we should all think that. And it doesn't have to be in our little group. It can be expansive. They had... Thousands of baptism in, in California on, on Pentecost Sunday. How are we not all going, praise the Lord? As the pastor who was heading that thing up said, God lit a match. How are we not just so blessed that God is lighting matches all over the place? Okay? All right. All right, folks, you've been listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, taking a 72 and one half hour break. Then we'll come back. More insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. It may be false, but it feels the same. So I punish myself. I go down to the jail of my soul. The views expressed in the preceding program were those of the speakers and not necessarily those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors.